Welcome to the chapter of the Loire Valley in France. In French, this would be pronounced Vallée de la Loire. The Vallée de la Loire is located in the northwestern part of France, not as far north as um, Normandie or Bretagne, where there is no wine growing, but they have the famous uh, apple plantations to produce cidre, which in England is called cider. So it's one of the most northern wine growing areas of France, and it is all along the river Loire, which is very long, stretching through the country, coming from the upper parts of the Massif Central, which is in the middle of France, um, in the area of Allier, where you have mountainous and volcanic areas, and it's floating and ending in the Atlantic Ocean. When people hear Loire Valley, the very first thing they think of are the chateaux de la Loire. In contrast to the chateaux in Bordeaux, which are the uh, wineries, of course they are in beautiful buildings, some of them, at least the very famous ones, but chateau in Bordeaux is used as a synonym for a winery. Whereas in the Loire Valley, the chateaux are really castles. Um, some of them later transformed into um, castles not for defense, like a fortress, but castles to basically show off, to show how rich the owner was. And the wineries, in contrast to that, are mostly called domaine in the Loire Valley, like in Burgundy. Of course, if the winery is located in a real chateau, then the winery might also be called chateau. In total, the Loire Valley has more than 400 castles, fortresses, and chateaus. Some of them are world famous. This includes the Chateau of Chenonceau, the Chateau of Chaumont, then Blois, Angers, Saumur, and Chambord. These are some of the most famous ones. If you like old buildings, this is definitely a must-go region for you. You find information about the Loire Valley Chateaus, uh, thousands of entries in the internet, in German, in English, in any other language. There are, uh, of course, uh, boat, riverboat tours, but you could also go there by car. And to see some of those chateaus is really an outstanding experience. When we look at the Loire Valley as a wine growing region, we realize that the surface area is huge. So the Loire Valley is bigger than the entire vineyard area of Austria, which is 45,000 hectares. The Loire Valley is also bigger than Burgundy when it comes to vineyard surface area, and it is approximately 70,000 hectares. You have to remember this because it is important that you can somehow put into relation the size of the French wine growing areas. And the Loire is one of the biggest. 
Um, it has quite a lot of rainfall, so 820 millimeters. This is a rather humid climate, but this long stretched lower valley has a lot of different climate zones. In the center region, um, where the, the Loire River actually kind of comes from, we have continental climate, whereas where the Loire uh, finally uh, ends into the Atlantic Ocean, we have a maritime climate. And therefore, the Loire Valley cannot be seen as a heterogeneous growing area. It has a lot of different facets and therefore also many different wine styles. The viticultural hazards are in the continental part uh, that you may have late frost in May. Uh, it might have frost, uh, which the French call gel. Yeah, not gel, but it gel. This is frost that comes late and might ruin the very, very early blossoming. And um, in the region towards the coast, you might have a lot of rainfall in autumn. The principal grape varieties are Melon de Bourgogne and Folle Blanche in the very, very west of the Loire Valley area. And in the center region, we have Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir dominating. And in the middle part of the Loire Valley, which we kind of hear around Tours, the city of Tours, we call Touraine, we have Chenin Blanc and Cabernet Franc dominate. So it is important to know that we have mostly white wine in the Loire Valley and we have also red wine. And to kind of provide a better overview, which grape varieties dominate which part of the Loire Valley, I tried to sketch an overview. We have on the Atlantic coast a region which is dedicated to a wine called Muscadet. I will talk about Muscadet also later. And the grape variety for Muscadet is Melon de Bourgogne. So 30% of the white wines are from grape variety Melon de Bourgogne, which brings a wine that is called Muscadet. Please never mix up Muscadet with some kind of Muscat wine. So it's neither Muscatella nor is it Muscadel, which we find in Bordeaux. Don't get confused. Muscadet is completely different and it is made from Melon de Bourgogne. Then the second most important grape variety and world famous is Sauvignon Blanc, which we find mostly in the part of center. So it's called Loire Centre because it comes from the uh, kind of center of France. Uh, also the kind of mountainous region there is called Massif Central. So kind of central plateau that we find in the middle of France. And finally, also world famous and originally 
also from the Loire Valley is Chenin Blanc, which we mostly find in the middle Loire, which contains the cities Anjou, Saumur, and the city of Tours, and therefore the wines are called Vin de Touraine. The red grape varieties are definitely dominated by Cabernet Franc. So more than half of the red wines are made from Cabernet Franc. We also find Gamay in the Loire Valley, mostly in this middle part. And we already just heard about Beaujolais. It comes from the Beaujolais region. It is a very thin-skinned grape variety, and it delivers some outstanding, easy-drinking, nice red wines in the Loire Valley as well. Also worth mentioning, with 8% is Pinot Noir, and it is quite funny that the Loire Valley kind of mixes grape varieties from Burgundy and Bordeaux within its wine growing regions. So we find Pinot Noir also mostly in the center, uh, which is called here Vin du Centre, but we also find it in the middle part of the Loire and there might be Pinot Noir uh, vineyards and Chardonnay vineyards which are both Burgundy varietals, and they may be located next to Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon vineyards, both of which we find in Bordeaux. And Sauvignon Blanc is also mostly in the center part, but maybe also somewhere planted in the middle. And also Sauvignon Blanc, as we already heard, can be found in Bordeaux. There are many, many other grape varieties in the Loire Valley, but the ones that you have to remember are the three leading white varietals, Melon de Bourgogne, Sauvignon Blanc, and Chenin Blanc, as well as the three dominating red varietals, Cabernet Franc, Gamay, and Pinot Noir. Different to the wines of Bordeaux, in the Loire Valley, we find mostly single varietal wines. So, like in Burgundy, where the reds are made of Pinot Noir, and the whites inclusively, sorry, exclusively of Chardonnay, we find single varietal wines in the Loire Valley. There are hardly any blends. So the wines from the coast, which are called Muscadet, but also other AOCs, they are made exclusively from the grape variety Melon de Bourgogne. The crystalline rocks that are around the city of Nantes give the grapes a kind of finesse and they are superior to the ones that are grown uh, in, in areas of sedimentary rock. So these crystalline rocks. Muscadets are the only wines in the world that are made from Melon de Bourgogne. So this is very unique to the Loire Valley. And the name Melon de Bourgogne, of course, suggests that it comes from Burgundy. But in Burgundy, we cannot find any Melon de Bourgogne grapes anymore, which is pretty interesting. So the only area in the world where this varietal is grown is the west of the Loire Valley. Muscadet is extremely popular in France 
You find it in every single supermarket and it is known to be a very, very good food pairing partner with fish and seafood. So quite often when uh, shrimp or mussels or a specific kind of fish is on promotion in a supermarket, there is a muscadet next to it also on promotion. And people would grab a box of, of shrimps or um, uh, the fish on promotion together with a bottle of muscadet. Muscadet in most of the cases, also the superior ones, which are grown on crystalline rock, like the Muscadet Sèvres et Men, that's also written on the label, they are normally not very expensive. So even quite uh, exclusive Muscadet Sèvres et Men, you can find at the price point of 10, perhaps 12 euros. Muscadet is five, six or seven euros and easy to drink, not very expressive, but a white uh, that would go with food very well. Chenin Blanc originally comes from the Loire Valley. Around the 10th century, the grape variety was first mentioned in written documents and it was there also called Plant d'Anjou, so the plant of the Anjou region. Anjou, as we already mentioned, is also the name of the city. The current name was popularized by Rabelais in the 15th century. This was a very famous uh, writer in France and he mentioned this grape variety and the wines uh, in books. Chenin is the Loire Valley's really iconic grape variety. They are very proud of that varietal and it is, um, as you also saw in the statistics, further spread and more widely planted um, than all the rest of the grape varieties. And in the middle Loire, it is absolutely dominating. Only with the kind of new popularity of Sauvignon Blanc, which actually came when this Loire varietal was planted and made famous in New Zealand, they started also planting Sauvignon Blanc in the middle Loire. But originally, the Chena is there real proud. Uh, it is the region's uh, third most widely grown varietal nowadays. As I said, the Sauvignon Blanc replaced quite a lot of Chena and expresses the richness of its Loire terrace in the full when you harvest it a bit ripe. So, not too early, then it can be a quite neutral wine, both in the bouquet as well as on the palate. But when you have a certain degree of ripeness, the Chena is really an outstanding uh, grape variety. And they make all different kinds of wines with it. A very simple, easy drinking and dry white wine, then dry kind of later harvested um, single vineyard wines, we would call that kind of reserve category. Then they produce outstanding sparkling wines, which is called Crémant de la Loire, also from Chenin Blanc, and they produce off-dry white wines and also sweet white wines from Chenin Blanc. 
it can perhaps be a bit compared not in aroma and taste, but in the kind of uh, huge palette that you can um, use it for with Gruner Vetlina, where you also find inexpensive, easy drinking dry white wines, up to reserve wines. Uh, what we do not so have very often are off-dry Grüner Wettlina. This is rather the Riesling type of Germany. But uh, the sparkling ones also are quite uh, popular in Austria uh, from, from Riesling or Grüner Wettlina. But there, in the Loire Valley, most of that is made from Chenin Blanc. And in all its different facets, it can bring really outstanding wines. Sauvignon Blanc became world famous as it was planted across the world. Its origin is the Loire Valley. I think people still wouldn't know that uh, Sauvignon Blanc exists if it wasn't for the success story of this grape variety in New Zealand. Because we have to realize on the world famous Loire Valley Sauvignons, the grape variety is not mentioned on the label. So the wines from the Centre, from the central part of the Loire Valley, they would display on the label Sancerre or Puy Fumé, which are the two most famous ones. They wouldn't have the grape variety mentioned on the, on the label, perhaps on the back label, but not on the front label. So Sauvignon is a very delicate grape variety. It is very sensitive and it displays a lot the soil and the climate in which it is grown. Sauvignon Blanc definitely prefers cool climate. It is not very suitable for uh, moderate or even hot climates. And it has a strong, um, it displays strongly the soil type it is grown on. Very famous for the Loire Valley are the flint stones that we find there uh, in the in the terroir. Flint stones yeah, have the name to, to make fire with. And uh, you can really find this flinty character in the aroma of Sancerre and Puy Fumé. You know that Sauvignon Blanc can be found in Bordeaux as well, where it is blended with Sémillon, and for the sweet wines, it is blended with Sémillon and a little, little bit of Muscadelle. In the Loire Valley, it is a single varietal wine. The same um, phenomenon we see with Cabernet Franc. We also find Cabernet Franc in Bordeaux, where it is in 99% of the cases a small proportion in a Bordeaux blend, which mostly consists of Cabernet and Merlot, or the other way around, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. And there is a proportion, a smaller one, of Cabernet Franc added to this. There are only very few exceptions in Bordeaux where a blend, a Bordeaux blend, would be dominated by Cabernet Franc or even be a single varietal Cabernet Franc. This is very, really the exception. In the Loire Valley, we find a lot of AOCs where the red wine is a single varietal Cabernet Franc. This includes Anjou, Saumur, Touraine, Chinon, 
Saint-Nicolas de Bourgueil, and many more. You find the AOCs written on this slide. You don't have to remember them, but you should know that Cabernet Franc is the red grape variety for many Middle Loire AOCs red wine. It is native to the Nantes region, but scientists think that it comes from the Basque country in Spain. Um, it is the Loire Wellis red varietal par excellence, and it was already mentioned uh, in, in the Middle Ages to be grown in that area. As I already said, it is made into a single varietal wine. And Cabernet Franc really displays its true expression in Loire Valley wines. Which aromas dominate a Cabernet Franc from the Loire? It is red bell pepper. So if you smell a red really dominated by red bell pepper, you can already guess hmm, this might be a Cabernet Franc from the Loire Valley. The Loire Valley has a couple of really outstanding personalities and producers. Some of them became world famous. Especially to mention is Nicolas Joly, because he was one of the absolute pioneers for biodynamic grape production and style of winemaking. So he wrote a couple of books about that topic, and he is a, actually a studied banker until he come, came back uh, to France, to his father's uh, winery, and started there all over. And as you can see in the pictures, he works the vineyards with horses. He was a really rebel at his, uh, in, in his early days. Uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, all the neighbors, of course, uh, thought he went totally crazy. His wines are nowadays some of the absolute benchmarks and some of the best Chenin Blancs in the world. Um, the ones that you have here in the picture, one is the absolute, uh, how can I say, uh, benchmark in its field. It is called Coulet de Serran. You can look it up in the internet. It's quite expensive. I tried uh, some vintages of it. It is really outstanding. It is made in a biodynamic way. And um, it found hundreds, if not thousands, a whole generation of biodynamic young winemakers who wanted to go in the direction which Nicolas Jolie also described in his books. Here listed, you find a couple of other recommended producers. Um, if you miss this information uh, for other regions, I want to um, really draw your attention to the website of Chances Robinson. She would give a recommendation um, for outstanding producers in her point of view. Uh, for any one region of the world, basically. So what you see displayed here is partly my opinion and partly uh, taken from Chances Robinson's uh, web page. So if you, for example, would like to look up recommended or outstanding producers uh, for Beaujolais, please also consult chancesrobinson.com and search for Beaujolais area and you will also find always find recommendations and hints um, if you would like to buy a wine from there or simply look up uh, important producers and names in the internet. There is a one on this list that I also would like to mention specifically and this is Didier Dagenot. You find it the first uh, producer in the Puy Fumé section. 
also did Yé Dagenon works biodynamically. He uh, kind of was in the same generation with uh, Nicolas Joly. He, as far as I know, he didn't write any books, but he was really an iconic winemaker with long hair and uh, producing outstanding um, white wines. Uh, one of them is a Puy Fumé called Silex. Silex is the Latin word for Flintstone, and it has a, a stone on the label, nothing else. It's called Silex, has a stone on the label, and if you smell into the glass uh, with, uh, with a Puy Fumé Silex inside, you can really smell this flinty character of the earth it is grown on. Other recommended producers um, are uh, numerous in the uh, Loire Valley. There are, as you heard, thousands of them. Perhaps the most famous one is uh, Gerard Depardieu. He comes from the area, so he is from the Loire Valley. Uh, Gerard Depardieu is a very world famous actor. Among many, many, many other characters, he played um, Christopher Columbus, who um, in 1492, as the film title also says, discovered America. And Gerard Depardieu owns several uh, winemaking domains in the Loire Valley, and you will find wines uh, with Gerard Depardieu's signature and face on the label in nearly every French supermarket. It is very common. It is uh, widely distributed among the supermarkets of France. Uh, so in Carrefour, in Auchan, Les Trois Musquetaires, you find uh, the wines from Gérard Depardieu and they are a good price quality ratio. So you could try them when you come to France.